Let's talk about IPv6 security and tunneling. First, let's start off with the security best practices for both IPv6 and also IPv4. The first is disable network services that are not needed. So if you have anything running on your server, is it Linux or on your router or something else, disable it if you do not need it. Second thing is disable every interface on a switch and router that is not needed. Or else an attacker could just plug in a cable and join your network. The third part is only use switches that have hardware forwarding because software forwarding can fail if you encounter a DDoS. That's an attack that's sending a lot of traffic to your site and if the switch cannot do hardware forwarding, it might break down. Fourth thing is limit network management access to infrastructure. Use access lists, use an admin VLAN or something and enable SSH on your devices only from these specific networks. Do not enable SSH on your router to the whole internet. The last point is limit network management protocols such as SNMP as much as possible because using SNMP you cannot only read all of the configuration of the device, you can also set most of it. These best practices apply to both IPv4 and IPv6 and you should take care of them if you want to run a secure network. For IPv6 especially, you should just disable router advertisements on links that are not directly connected to client networks. IPsec. IPsec is a security mechanism that is available for IPv4 and IPv6. In IPv4 it has been set up on top of the protocol and in IPv6 it has been part of the protocol from the beginning. It is now mandatory and is reserved in the header. IPsec VPN is a really common type of VPN that uses IPsec and this is now possible on all IPv6 capable devices. Also routing protocols and other things can use authentication based on IPsec. Apart from that, nothing has changed. IPsec is still the same. Firewalls work just like with IPv4 and they have to be planned and engineered. You cannot just set up a firewall and think you're safe. Don't do it, read about it, do a good configuration and check all of your access lists. According to best practices, the following ICMP messages should be permitted as per RFC 4890. That's the destination unreachable. It's packet too big for the path MTU discovery. That's time exceeded that you need for a trace route. The parameter problem that checks if the extension headers and destination options are fine. Echo request, which is ping and echo response, which is also the response to ping. These protocols should be enabled in all networks to allow troubleshooting and the correct work of IPv6. Let's have a look at the recommended security features for a standard network. If you follow the Cisco guidelines, you have a network that's core, distribution and access. All the clients and servers are connected to access. Then we have distribution layers where all the access switches connect to redundantly. And then we have a core, that's the core of the network. Let's look from top to bottom. In the core, you should use routing protocol authentication, no matter what routing protocol you use. Then in the distribution layer, you should also do routing authentication so nobody hacks in your network. You should also enable unicast RPF, that's reverse path forwarding. You should enable default gateway authentication. You should set IPv6 neighbor discovery binding limit and IPv6 device tracking. And in the access layer, you should enable IPv6 snooping on your switches. You should set neighbor discovery inspection, neighbor discovery binding limit, IPv6 device tracking. You can set router advertisement guard, DHCPv6 guard, the send. This is secure neighbor discovery and CGA, which is cryptographically generated addresses. This is part of the security extensions and you should set IPv6 port based ACLs. You should enable traffic storm control, port security and private VLANs, just like with IPv4. 
small thing on the RA guard. This is router advertisement guard. You can set this on ports that are not directly connected to routers. So on ports where you don't expect router advertisements. A client should never send a router advertisement or else it might be an attacker and somebody else might use it as a router and this is a man in the middle attack. DHCP v6 guard is just like with IPv4. You can set a trusted port where the DHCP v6 server is attached and all other ports should not be trusted and if there is a DHCP v6 advertisement from a client port, this port should be disabled because it might be an attacker.